happened in Lockerbie. And again, this is important because the CIA is continuing to generate trillions, bill, hundreds of billions of dollars in off-the-books money for black operations. And everybody knows what black ops are. I'm, I don't need to explain that. This is operations money across the world, especially in the Middle East where we're seeing such tension and trouble. So we need to really get this under control because this is becoming, this is the source of funding for the shadow government. Okay, but let me tell you what really happened on Lockerbie. Um, the, there was a rogue team that, okay, the CIA had, had legitimately believed that they needed to infiltrate the Islamic Jihad community, which was holding the hostage, the Western hostages, 96 high-profile Western hostages, including Terry Anderson, the Associated Press correspondent, um, Jerry Levin, the CNN bureau chief, uh, Mr. Buckley, who was the CIA station chief in Beirut, uh, and, and, and he, Mr. Buckley had been viciously, savagely tortured. Uh, he, may, he was a political target of the highest value, and they, they beat him with chains and bricks. They electrocuted the man. They tore out his, phone, his, his toenails. They did every possible thing that you could imagine. Um, Jerry Levin has said that he was held locked in a basement, chained to the floor for three years with a bucket to pee in. Uh, I'm sorry to be graphic, but these were horrible situations. And the CIA believed that they needed to infiltrate the Islamic Jihad community in order to get the hostages out. The problem was, and this was already controversial because what they had to do, they made a deal with the devil. They had to agree to move heroin, to, but that's why they did it. Okay, I just told you why they did it, but here's what it required. They had to make a deal with the devil to move heroin out of Beirut, through Frankfurt Airport, through Heathrow Airport, and on to New York. And they had baggage handlers who would literally just, you know, who were paid off to look the other way and move the right suitcases through on a, on a periodic basis so that the heroin would keep moving through this, this, this pipeline uh, all the way through, through Frankfurt, through London, and into New York. And so, how, Susan, how did this enable uh, the CIA to uh, infiltrate into the Islamic groups and this, this drug run? Well, the, they, the Islamic Jihad group was using uh, heroin to finance its war against Israel and to finance the, the, the civil war uh, that Lebanon was fighting. And so but what happened was even worse than that because the, there was a rogue CIA team. And the, 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 CIA, the CIA team included Oliver North of Iran-Contra notoriety, and some other people associated with Iran Contra, and they were they they were they recognized that, that they were getting filthy rich off this, uh, off this for them in their own private bank accounts. Not all of it was going to the operations; it was also going to to their own private bank accounts. And um, and uh, uh, anyway, so what they did was they went rogue. And they began to warn that the, the purpose of the operation was supposed to be that they would, they would infiltrate he, the, the Islamic Jihad, which is now called Hezbollah. And they would infiltrate them and they would identify where the hostages were being held. And then they would go in and they would be able to call in a rescue and do a raid and, and seize the hostages and they'd save the hostages. And this was how they, they rationalized it. When they went rogue, Somebody began to warn the Islamic Jihad who was, uh, when, when the, uh, the uh, uh, Delta Force and the Americans were about to swoop in. So exactly at the moment that they were about to come in and save the hostages, they would come in, and the, the Islamic Jihad would suddenly move them. And they'd have to, the American side would have to start all over again to find these people where they had been moved to, where they had been transported to. And this was a very dangerous operation 
this was a very, this was very, every time somebody was, had to start over again, there was more risk of more hostages, there was more risk they would be killed. To put this in context, Terry Anderson was held for seven years. Jerry Levin was held for three years because they kept, because of this deception and this rogue agent. So, um, the, the, the Defense Intelligence Agency, which also had a team there, reported to Langley, sorry for this long buildup, the Defense Intelligence Agency uh, called him the FBI, and they said, we think we have a traitor who is profiting from the heroin, who's, who's ratting us out to Hezbollah, and we need you to come in and arrest these people and get them out of our way so we can finish this operation. Well... That was, the FBI did send in a team, and the team that the FBI sent gathered evidence of heroin trafficking, gathered money, and they were flying back on Pan Am 103 when the heroin, the heroin suitcase was switched with a bomb, okay? And to be honest with you, I've been told this was done in Frankfurt, not Heathrow. Uh, I, I believe in good faith to Jim Swire that he is mistaken. I know he says it was done in Heathrow. It was not. It, my, it's my understanding it was done in Frankfurt. Okay, well, to be fair to Jim, he was saying that there was a break-in, and so there is some evidence that it was swapped in Heathrow. What, what, what have you heard, and, and what's the veracity of what you've heard about it, uh, the suitcases being swapped in Frankfurt instead, which was where well, the plane was I've before? I've been told that the man who put the bomb on the airplane lives in, in the suburbs of Washington, six miles from my house. The man who did this was the nephew of uh, Abdul, um, the famous terrorist whose name now escapes me. I'm sorry. Uh, it'll come in a second. Uh, and he lives in Fairfax County. He, he lives about six miles from the White House. Okay, so who was uh, actually on that plane then, and what were they about to do when okay. they got back to the, the United States? The people on the airplane that had to be killed off were the FBI team with the drugs and the money, the defense intelligence team that had filed the complaint against the CIA and the deputy station chief of the CIA who was flying back to answer charges against uh, his team. And when you killed off those people, you killed off the knowledge base, that was the institutional knowledge that had assimilated all the, that, that was capable of putting all the pieces together. Well, first of all, uh, the, the nephew, the, the, the name of the, the, the man is Ahmed, the, 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 the five, there are four or five people who are key people. Ahmed Jibril, that's the name that was escaping me for a second. His nephew is the one who put the bomb on the plane. Ahmed Jibril. And what they did was they switched the heroin suitcase for the bomb. Okay. Uh, Abu Nidal has confessed. Abu Nidal was killed in a shootout in Baghdad with Saddam's forces, and he confessed, and his people, his family and friends stood by that story, and they insisted that he was the mastermind, and what had happened was that the rogue team had warned Ahmed Jibril and that, that crew that what the CIA was doing, and that the, the CIA was, that was, and the FBI were on to the game, and they were going to shut it down, and everybody was going to be in trouble. So at that point, they knew they'd been busted, and then they, they took action uh, to, protect the oper to, to protect the secrecy of the operation. But everybody who did it has been protected. Um, this is a very uh, damaging, you know, the, why do we have, I, I think that it's, it's self-evident why the CIA, it, once you understand the truth, it's self-evident why the CIA has to stop this story from ever coming out. This is the beginning of a drug cartel at the CIA. These people have never been caught, they've never been prosecuted, and, they, and the CIA has continued right up to the current day to you, exploit drug sales, heroin sales particularly, particularly heroin, in the global market to raise operational money.